Ready to start? All right, good, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much. I, I appreciate everyone. Come on in. We're waiting for you. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time, and you're very kind to come and join us for our, for our first session this morning. Uh, my name is Don Zavis. Uh, I'm one of part of the, uh, the sales team for, for Sintel Technologies. And uh, we've got a lot of different things to talk about today. Those, by the way, that were at the five minute yesterday, uh, my five minute came in at like two minutes and 30 seconds. So it was kind of like bang, 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 bang. But today we're certainly going to go into a lot more detail, give you a lot more of the meat about Scientel and why it may make sense to look at us for some of your big data needs. So we were putting, one thing I should say before we get started, we were putting the session together that we realized there was kind of one or two ways that we could go with this. We could either make it very, very technical and, you know, lots of formulas and squiggly lines and all that kind of stuff, and, and that probably has a market. Or, you know, or we could make it, we, I want to make it very interactive, but I really wanted to kind of reach out to the people because the vast majority of people that I've talked to at, at this particular conference had problems. They were coming, if they were end users, they had an issue. And I can't, it doesn't do this, or I can't get my, my database to do this. So when we were developing the, the process, we were developing the session for today, I wanted to kind of speak to those people. So the idea is when you leave today, the question I would like you to answer is that would it make sense to call Scientel about something? Whatever that something is. So something you've heard today, seen today, a slide, something that I said piqued your interest. So I, and I would encourage you to call us. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't need, there's no obligation, there's nothing like that, but share with us whatever your issue is, because we built this session to try to answer those questions. Is that okay, everybody on board with that? All right. Um, this actually, the 2013 NoSQL data, we were actually here in the beginning. We were actually here at, the, at the, I believe, the first one that they had. And it's interesting that this industry in just literally a few short years has grown to where it was now because only being named in 2010, you'd think, you know, how do you get so many people on board all at once? Today's session, I want to specifically talk about how to process structured and unstructured big data with Gensonics, NoSQL database, and our all data management system. That's, that's a mouthful. I got through it, didn't make one mistake on it. What I would also encourage you to do, anybody that's taking notes, is I would encourage you to just write down our website address. And sometime today, tomorrow, when you find yourself with a free moment, when it's fresh in your mind, the things that you got from today's session, go and invest a few moments in our website. Take a look around, get a sense of what we do. Also, I would encourage you to go one step further and jot down our email address. Now, that comes to us that are here right now. So if I say something or you hear something or you go to our booth and you get something, you have a question, if you send an email to that, ultimately it will get to us here. And we can connect with whoever has the question sometime over the next day or two and really attempt to answer it. So I, I, we want, again, we want to make this very, very interactive for the people who are in the room that they can get the questions that they have answered. So let's get started. Uh, there we go. Let me start with a brief history, because obviously Sintel's been around for some time. We actually were established in 1977, and if anyone was around in 1977, the IT industry was in its infancy. The way we programmed, you know, we were kind of vacillating, but not to, not to date myself, but I remember being in college and actually getting, you remember the punch cards? I mean, I know anybody here is less than 40, like, oh my God, you guys are dinosaurs. They're punch cards. You put information in little holes that were in the cards and you slipped it in the computer, and that's how you gave it the instructions to do whatever it was going to do. The interesting thing about being established in 1977 for us is it gives us a rich here, it gives us a very rich heritage, uh, a rich history, adaptability over the years, because for the people that are in the NoSQL industry right now in the last three years, there's been many iterations of the next biggest thing since 1977. You look at all the firsts and where technology has gone, and every one of those technology items has been followed by a first, some breakthrough that's in the industry, something that happened that changed the world. And we've gone through many, many, many of those iterations to get here. So it made us very adaptable, and it gives us that history and a rich tradition of being capable to do these things. We're an international IT technology company. So if you're dealing in scenarios where you're dealing uh, certainly out of the United States, we have the capacity and the capability to assist you with that. We also dealt with and do continue to deal with hardware and software. And you're going to see that's much more impressive when we get to the pioneer line right there. But our specialty from our inception in 1977 was in the database management, primarily in business, and most specifically in the database management systems and its applications. So this is one of my favorite lines. I'm going to point to this one. A pioneer in the development of the NoSQL database. So let me share with you what that means. Even though we've been around since 1977, we created our first NoSQL process or in, in installation in 1985. Now at that time, it certainly was nothing like it was today. The industry didn't exist. In 1985, we didn't even have a name for it. 
because the NoSQL name in any version of that wasn't even there. We actually called it NSQL. You know why? The founder of our company is named Norman. Really, that was it. We, NSQL meant Norm SQL. There wasn't a name. We didn't know what it was. All we knew was it was something different. We had come across something that didn't exist before. There was a process, something that happened. The platform that we operate on right now was actually introduced and launched in 2003. So in 2003, the platform, now, since that time, it's gone through many changes and updates and, and changes. In fact, 90% of what you're going to look at right now on our product has happened only in the last three years, even though it was a product that was ultimately introduced in the 2000s. Why? Because it took that long for the industry to catch up. All during that time when we were developing that NoSQL product back in 2003, we just had problems. We had an issue. A client would come to us and say, hey, can you do this? And we did it. Or they'd say, you know what, it'd be great if your thing did this. Well, now it does. Or if we could only get it to work in this way, and we created that and made that happen. So we've created many, many, many versions, which brings us to the amazing product that we have today since its modest inception in 2003. Because at that time, it solved a lot of the data intensive issues and problems using that NoSQL database. Our main products are broken into three areas. We have our Gensonics Lite, which is approximately one terabyte. It's for a small business marketplace, small to medium sized business. We have our medium to large marketplace and our Gensonics Medium. And ultimately, we have our flagship, which is our enterprise item, approximately 10 terabytes to multi petabytes. And that's for a large system installation. But as we were developing this, and again, one of our claims to fame is we have the capacity to do structured and unstructured data uh, on the same product, in the Gensonics product. Well, at that time, there wasn't even the hardware to support that. Our late large data warehouse appliance was created because there was nothing that existed at the time that would allow us to do what we do. And now our three main products is the DBIS intranet, which is our supply chain management. That's how we cut our teeth. That's how we got into the world. Our DBIS e-commerce systems and our DBIS BI analyticals. So when we were creating this, go back maybe a couple of years in the past, and a lot of, a lot of this might be to some of the people that have been very obvious. But let me tell you, years ago, before this whole industry took place, this was a big deal because nobody knew exactly what it was. In order to solve something, you've got to figure out what it is. You've got to put some kind of parameter on it. You've got to know where it begins. You've got to know where it ends. We also realized very early on that the uh, SQL databases weren't handling the big data. At that time, you had you know, very easy structured data, and the products that were out there were doing a pretty good job of it, right? You got rows and you got columns, everything's kind of where it should be. So a lot of the big players that were out there and the household names that are, that are here in this wonderful uh, facility were doing a pretty good job. But what we realized relatively early on is we saw a trend starting to happen. It was a grumbling, and it was like, you know what? At some point in time, we've got all these new things that are, that are coming up. That's cut, that was the inception of the NoSQL database concept. And ultimately, we had to start figuring out the differences. Where the differences lie? What, what part falls into this category? What part falls into that category? And now, how are we going to handle it? If we're going to come up with a solution, it better be a legitimate solution. If we're going to start plug some holes, we're going to have to figure out why. And our NoSQL architecture was the mechanism by which we created those solutions. So we started looking at defining big data. We said structured data, 20 terabytes and above. That's pretty straightforward. There's nothing earth shaking there, right? Unstructured data at two terabytes and above. OK, well, that's nothing earth shaking there. Well, I'm a sales guy, and this is the one that appeals to me. The large data acquired from outside big data supply, because that's non-restricted. It could be little, it could be big. It all depended on the query that you put in. If you could find out exactly, say, for example, you owned a company, and you wanted to know how many widgets that you sold on the day before Christmas, on the East Coast when there was four inches of snow. Because for whatever reason, you as a CEO wanted to know that. Well, do you think that's an incredible amount of information that would be mined from the field that you have out there? Of course. So that large data acquired from outside big data supplies for sales stats, research, general information. And that started to drive what we started to create because now we drew a little picture for ourselves. And we realized that the standard data structured, still less than 20 terabytes. We saw that our big data also, in this case, structured that 20 terabytes because of its size. But this was the explosion. This was it. This was what was going to change the face of the world. Because at that time, a lot of the household things that we did and a lot of the ways that we did really weren't, the, you know, if you, it, it, I always like the idea that if 10 years ago, if you used the word name Twitter, you think you're talking about a bird. 
Because the, at the time, that language wasn't there. There wasn't even the technology in place to do it. There wasn't a big issue. And now we're dealing with music and videos and movies and charts and graphs and anything that you can imagine. And it's coming at us at an ever-increasing rate, in an ever-increasing volume, and an ever-increasing speed. And now we're dealing with multi-petabytes and everything that's going to be on the other side of that. So as we're structuring this relationship, as we're developing this product, as we're going through, we're recognizing that obviously these are areas we're going to have to deal with. These are going to be here, but that's going to be the future. So we started picking the failure. We started looking where the weaknesses were. Again, if you're going to identify and you're going to solve something, you best find out where the problems are. And it came out almost immediately. The basic me methodology for the data connection was the join. I would take table A, I would take table B, and I would connect them together. And that would ultimately give me the information that I'm looking for. So that made, that made good sense. Well, but when the tables got very, very, very large, we couldn't do that anymore. The technology wasn't in place that would allow that to happen very easily. And now we've got duplications of data, which we're now making it even worse. Now, this seems very simplistic by today's standards. But when this was really starting to take place, the undercurrent, the grumblings were huge. So let's look at the customer table. I got a handy dandy laser here somewhere. There it is, right? So if you look at the customer table, right, you've got ID, name, and city. You've got an ID number assigned, whatever they are. You've got the name of the client. You've got the city that they are. So you've got four times three components. So that means you've got three columns. You've got four rows. Very simple, right? You've got 12. You've got an order table here, which consists of the customer ID, the order number that's been assigned to it, and the amount of the sale. And I'm a sales guy, so it's about the money on that. So I want to make sure. Now I know that I have 11 rows and I have three columns. That's 33. So the logic would be what? If I was going to join those two tables together, how many should I ultimately come out with? Well, 12 plus 33 should be 45. Right? Makes sense, right? It wasn't. This is one example where the sum of the parts is actually more than what you originally started with. Because now my number of components, although I have five columns and I have 11 rows, now I'm at 55. And on top of that, I still have to keep that information right there. I still have to keep my customer table intact, and I still have to keep my order table intact. And now I'm creating something on top of that which is greater than the sum of the parts that it starts with. So does that look like, I mean, does that look like a process for destruction? Because what's going to happen ultimately is this is going to get larger, that's going to get larger, and that's going to get unmanageable because the physical sizes of what we were dealing with were absolutely enormous. So we figured that if we're going to make anything in the world, we better figure out a way to not have that. And to not have that ultimately is the solution in the NoSQL. So the NoSQL database works because it handles the unstructured data. We talked about that, the little barrel that showed all the videos and the music and stuff. All right. The Gensonics product handles the structured data as well. And the reason for that is when we were, we were designing it, we were creating it, when somebody came up and had a problem, whether it was structured or unstructured, we just solved the problem. So we've got our NoSQL database, so we've got our program that we're working on it, and this, this nice lady over here comes to us, and what was your first name, miss? Nellie. Nellie. So Nellie comes up to us and she says, I got a problem with my unstructured data. We said, okay, fine. We went in there and did our thing and we fixed it. And then he came and and Ray has a problem with the structured data. And we go in there, and we do our little thing, right, and we fix it. And we're building it and building it and building it. So now we're building solutions for the unstructured, and we're building structured, solutions for the structured, and we're doing it at the exact same time. This wasn't a scenario where we built a product that fit a hole that somebody else had. It wasn't like, and, and I don't know if there's anybody in the room from Oracle, because they got a great product, of course. But it wasn't like, we're going to build something for all the stuff that Oracle can't do. We're building something that didn't exist, and we were just basically taking the problems that you had and fixing them. And then it went in, and ultimately it manifests itself. Yes? Can you elaborate a little bit on what is the scenario or the use case that you call the unstructured and structured? The, the, of what we call structured and structured? Uh, especially between the buzzword days. And, and how those things, like what, what, what's actually happening in the real world? Because it you know what? I, I, I don't know how they handle the questions and answers, but I do have a slide that will answer that. So when I get to there, I'm going to have you sit right here and I'm going to do it to you. Okay? I'm just funny with you, right? All right. But it handled, we figured out a way. So we figured, no, we can handle that. And it's actually a cool slide. You're going to dig it. I'll show you. All right? So it handles the structure. But we didn't have a join table. We didn't have a situation where the two parts coming together were larger than the sum of the parts that it started with. 
we also realized it could be scalable. Because if I didn't have to create something to control that out of control expansion when you have the joint tables together, we could easily increase it or decrease it by whatever he needed. So if he needed it big because we're just pulling it out as we need it, it's big. It doesn't have to force something together and make itself larger. The other item is, is that we know the four V's of big data. All right, volume, bigger every single day. Here's a great thing for those who are taking notes, write this down, you probably heard it. I, I'm a sales guy, I'm not a tech guy. And, I found out and I was told, and I believe this to be true by the way, that yesterday, the 20th of August, we generated more data, more data the 20th of August, than the entire history of mankind up until 1999, yesterday. Let that resonate for a second what that means. So that means between the history of dawn of man, when we started putting stuff on cave walls, because that's data, up until 1999, the sum total of all that was equal to yesterday. So that means today, now it's the sum total of yesterday and the history of all mankind from 1999 until the dawn of man. And that's today. And what's tomorrow going to hold? What's it going to look like in five years, ten years volume? Velocity. Historically, the bigger it gets, the slower it gets. Is a dog faster than an elephant? Well, not my little dog, but most dogs are. All right, why? Historically, the bigger it gets, the slower it gets. Now, on top of that, we've got to deal with variety. Remember I made a little barrel here? Because there might be a piece of information that comes now that's a photo. And the next one that comes in is a, is a document. The next one comes in is a movie. The next one comes in is Katy Perry's new album. The next one that comes in is, is, is my Wall Street Journal. And we don't have any choice. It, just, it comes in. That's the way it comes. So now we're dealing with variety. Now on top of that, we're dealing with variability. Some are big, some are small, some are fast, some are slow. And we're going to accept it exactly the same way. We're going to gobble it all down identical. So as a Gensonic product was created, we're creating it around a marketplace that's exploding in front of us. We're just kind of accepting it as it comes and we're putting the items in place to take care of those situations. So our Gensonic data structure certainly is supported in the SQL network. But we have the opportunities and the ability to select how we're going to build what we build for you. We're going to pick the one that we think is appropriate. So if you come to us and we believe that a network application is the best, that's what we're going to use. Why? Because we can. Relational is the best, we're going to use it. If it's vertical or graph, whatever it is, we have the capacity within our Gensonic product to take your information and put it into the best possible scenario, the best possible framework that we can come up with. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, that's simple. It's a single application. Why reinvent the wheel? If you've got something that works, stay with it. Advantage of speed and simplicity, and the results are ultimate savings. So if you're looking at a scenario where these D the NoSQL databases are not the same, why? Well, because there are some people whose claim to fame is documents. That's it. They do documents. They want to believe they do it better than everyone, and, they, and I'm sure they've got some great po graphs. Some do graphs. Their claim to fame is graph. They've built their product around, historically, a hole that someone else had that they were able to fill up. And they do a good job at it, all right? The key values are structured. The new SQLs that come into your database are going to be structured. As we were developing our Gensonics product, however, we recognized we didn't have that luxury. We were getting things from different places in different times. Again, we weren't filling a hole that was left open by someone else. We were attempting to create something that didn't exist. So what we found is in the unstructured data management, most people were using an SQL database for the structure, and well, that makes sense. They're using a NoSQL database for the unstructured, that makes sense too, right? When they got their large structured data management, they were using their SQL database for their standard structure, and NoSQL database for their large structure. And on the surface, that makes sense. They're, they're somewhere embedded in those lines as a solution. The drawback, where we found the problem that we were facing, however, is that requires two different types of databases, all right? two different types of systems, two different types of expertise, two different types of hardware, two different types of contractors, two different types of providers. All right? And historically, whenever you get multiple people, it's that Murphy's Law, whatever can go wrong will. And what I've found is anytime I have more than one person involved, if something goes wrong, they turn into an octopus. All right? It's never me. In our scenario, it's always us. We're the only ones. We don't bring in two types of databases. We don't have two different types of systems. We don't bring in additional levels of expertise because that's all provided 
in our large data warehouse products. So our 2200, 22 nodes, 176 CPU cores, 264 GB memory, 150 terabytes. That's a pretty impressive thing, by the way. I mean, I, when I, to this day, when I think of those numbers, it's impressive. It uses the, the highly procedural known SQL language, so that makes it easy. And it has all of the built-in storage management that you're going to be required. Now, the interesting thing, you can't really, it doesn't do justice from that picture. But it's about the size of what you would put into a big closet. That's an amazing thing. So when we start to talk about the capacity, what this amazing device can do. Yeah. yeah. You should mention that that's not the only. Oh, no. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. That the particular one that was photographed there is one of the options that we provide. Now, certainly, again, being scalable, you can make it as large or as small as necessary. And what we found, we were doing projections. This particular projection was a trillion record SQL because we wanted to be able to monetize what we do. When someone comes to us and says, how much is it what you do? We say this, and the first thing they say is why? Why do I need it? Why does it make any sense? I got whatever I have, imperfect though it may be, and I'm just going to keep using it. So we came up with this. They actually came up with this for me because I'm not smart about this kind of stuff. So I said, make it as simple as possible. Here's simple as possible. Here's a trillion record transaction one, a trillion record transaction two. Couldn't be simpler, right? You have an index with 51 terabytes of information. Transaction two has an index with 51 terabytes of information. Again, couldn't be simpler. Your data is broken down to 36 terabytes here, 16 terabytes here, 14 terabytes here, 16 terabytes there. Everybody make sense to everybody? Nothing, nothing earth shaking right here, right? When you put them together now, because of the redundancy factor of the SQL database, remember how we talked about all the little charts and stuff? Now I put the indexes together, and now I have 102 terabytes. When I put the data together, now I have 66. And ultimately, what that requires me to do on top of this, so all this I still got to keep, I now need to have 168 terabytes of additional storage. All right. So I said, now I'm a sales guy, I'm not real smart, and I said, oh, well, it's no big deal. If, if, if it's a dollar a terabyte for storage, who cares? It's $168, big deal. So, so it makes no. So I started doing some research, and I got stuff from all over the world. I got some prices as high as $4,000 a terabyte for storage. Now, yeah, that includes everything. I'm sure there's stuff that's tacked on it, and stuff people do, and stuff people don't do, and now all that's fine. But even if you think $4,000 a terabyte of storage, and you're going to add into that 168 terabytes, it doesn't take long before you realize there's a significant dollar value attached to this. And if we were going to ever make any kind of enterprise, any kind of going business concern out of what we're doing, we better figure out a way when we do it. Our trillion record, Gensonics actual, same thing, same trillion for transaction one, same trillion for transaction two. We're going to add them up, and what do we have? Well. We don't need the redundancy of the tables. We don't need to recreate the second one the second time. So we only have to have 51 terabytes. We go to the next part. We don't need the redundancy of the 16. So we just need the 16. That's going to give us our 67 total, which is our Gensonic size of 117 terabytes total. Does everybody get that? It's, it's, it's simple. All right? But when we sat down there, we would compare it to what the alternative would be in our SQL application. Now we have an index of 102 terabytes, 66 for the day. We have 168 total. Their SQL size is 352 terabytes necessary for that particular transaction. Well, I'm going to go back to the thing that I just said previously. If I have to put that down to dollars and cents, what am I ultimately going to get? Well, I'm going to get, ultimately, an increase of 200% between what we can do in terms of the space and what the join does in terms of the space. That's our large data warehouse appliance, 2200. Now, obviously, as, as, as uh, Gloria mentioned, it can be larger. The only reason, by the way, for this I particularly like, I'm, I'm going to make the venture to guess that the vast majority of the people in this room are in some kind of office building, probably. All right? Whatever they do is in an office building. And I mentioned it previously. That fits into a good-sized closet. You don't have to have a floor. You don't have to have any kind of sophisticated equipment. You don't need chairs. You don't need a whole lot of other stuff that's there. Why? Because it doesn't require an enormous size. You can make it larger if you choose, but the actual product that is necessary to do the types of things we're talking about don't require an enormous amount of size. This actually gives you some sizing. And, and the people that are tech, we keep this in because the techie people look at it and go, ooh. So techie people, go ahead, go. All right. 
This, this to me is the amazing part about it. Remember how we talk about velocity and speed, really the volume? The bigger you get, historically, the slower you get. We actually figured we should probably have a slide that puts the money where the mouth is. So that's a trillion transaction table run. This is a program for an average table. So we basically look for a single customer ID, and we did a search within a trillion transactions to find it. We came up with 1,296. All right? To get that 1,296 took 1.256 seconds to search within 1 trillion transactions. It took me longer to say it than it did for this particular product to do it. So then we said, well, let's push our luck. What if we did more? You know, because obviously that's, even though a trillion is a lot, at some point in time, it's going to be bigger. What would bigger look like? And they said, okay, you know what? We're going to do something different. We're actually going to have a transaction to subtransaction. We're going to enter a start date for a client, and we're going to after, uh, put together an end date or an end for a client. We're going to identify both of those things. We're going to run the exact same thing. We came out with 2,106 total records of data. But here's the interesting thing. Even though this one was a search through a trillion, obviously because we're doing a beginning and an end, we're going to be searching through more. From zero minutes, 1.256 seconds, to zero minutes, 1.265 seconds. And keep in mind, that's what changed. Five to a six even though the actual processes was significantly larger. So when you look at speed related to volume, here's an application where we're doing more, significantly more, but we didn't have an abject increase in the speed associated with doing it. One of the particular reasons we found is as we were looking at the development of the Gensonics product, we had to figure out where, again, where the problems were. Where was the fly in the ointment? Let's just figure out what the problems are and fix that, and the rest of the stuff will line up itself. So we kind of mapped out an SQL process by steps. We took the Gensonics by steps, and we realized right here in the beginning, for whatever reason, either it's another data store, could come from a Gensonics, but that SQL process couldn't take this crushing amount of information all at once. The best that it could do is take some smaller chunk of it. And it would take that smaller chunk, and it would do something, and then it would take the findings and put it there. Then it would go back to the data store, or go back to us, wherever it is, and it would do that again. It would take out another smaller chunk, and it would do something to it, and then ultimately it would take it and it would put it someplace else. And it would do that and do that and do that over and over and over and over, depending on the size of the data store, depending on the amount that the SQL device could actually come up with. But it doesn't take long to look at it and go, that's a laborious process. Not only do you got five steps, but you've got this constantly repeating step that, that is phased in based on the sizes of what you have, based on the size of the data store, based on the size of the chunk you can take out. We realized very early on in the Gensonics product, we got something. We don't need to do that. We can basically create our data store, for lack of a better word, and we can pull out just what we need. We don't have to go through a long laborious process. We don't have to jiggle things around. We don't have to do any special calisthenics. We can just pull it right off the bat. God, I love this picture. What you're looking at right now is a 75 level deep explosion of our Gensonics DBIS. Now, again, I'm not a tech guy, and they're, they're explaining this to me, and they're saying everybody's ooh and ooh, and they're like, oh my God, this is great, this is great. I'm like, well, why is this great? All right, I don't, I'm not sure why it's great. It looks cool, right? I mean, you got two screens, you got a lot of stuff on there. I was told that, that in order to, give an example, and, this is, and, and again, this is something that floors a non-tech guy, a sales guy. To build a 747, the manufacturing documents for a 740, this is an airplane that carries, what, four, five, six hundred people? is less than 75 levels deep to build an airplane. That means if you took all the schematics and all the documents and all the parts and pieces you need to manufacture that thing, it's less than 75 levels deep. So when you look at capacity, it's enormous. Not only, again, we talk about scalability, not necessarily for something we're just going to use today. Of course today is going to be important, obviously. We want to make sure, yes? Oh yeah, I know, I love that. I love that. I like to believe, by the way, they named the first thing Enterprise after Star Trek too, because I'm a Star Trek geek. So now what you have is any scenario that you have right now, regardless of how complex it comes to us, we have the capacity already to be able to digest it. We have the capacity already to, do, to deal with it. So now, and the young lady who's standing right there, if she was here, I'd say this is your slide. This is the one that really kind of brings it all together because the explosion 
we believe is happening in the unstructured data. And yes, we're getting more structured data. That, that stands to reason. A lot of financial things and things that lend itself to rows and columns. But right now, the unstructured, as I mentioned earlier, if you use the word treat, you know, tweet 10 years ago, you're talking about a bird. There's somebody in their basement right now creating something that's going to change the world in the next three years. We don't even know it exists right now. We don't, we don't know the next thing that's coming around the corner. So we're looking at a scalable product. We're trying to factor in regardless of what happens. So our content manager, which is part of the offering, manages all that. Manages all the files, your emails, your PDFs, Excel, videos, everything that you have, Microsoft Access Database, no matter what it is, even with extended search times. And for those that want to see this, our demo in the booth will actually show you this actually functioning. I would encourage anyone who wants to see what that looks like to just invest a few moments at our booth and see it actually running, because it is amazing. This really is the wave of the future. We're not going to have the opportunity to be inherently selective of the what we do, how we do it, things of that nature. We're going to get it kind of as it comes. So what we also find is we were looking at Gensonics, and we kind of put a little morph there. But our Gensonics came out of the idea of fast generation sonic execution. We knew that the speed was going to be the critical aspect of all the things associated with this. Because ultimately, that's, that's, that's where the time is. Time is money, whether it's in computing time, calculating, whatever. That's ultimately where people are going to base their decision. So our scientific intelligence, the way we created our process, dictated that we look for something where science and intelligence meet. And when we look at the pioneers that are involved in our industry, of which certainly of which we are one of them, that gives us the opportunity to have a great placement in the future of this particular industry. Scientel, where science and intelligence meet. I thank you. So before we get, yes, sir. I'm sorry, I, I was trying to get, I was trying to get your question. Right, so I, I guess, I, just so I can make sure I understand what you're saying. Can you pull out both pieces of information equally the same? Is that? Just to show this, you know, if I want to drill, how much structure is my unstructured? Mm -hmm. Do you support that kind of a drill, that kind of relationship? Absolutely. Yeah, in, inherently when we were accepting the data, when it, when it comes into us, we have the ability to handle both of them, not only how it comes in, which is, I believe, which part, part of your answer, but certainly how we extract it. Does that answer your question? Okay. What do you, do you want to do? You want to take a stab at it? Because I, I maybe I'm not getting it. Okay. Right. Going through the, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. They would. Right. Yes. Yeah. You want to see the original data that generated this statistic. Yeah. It, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and interestingly enough, I mean, again, I'll go back to what I said previously because I'm a sales guy, I'm not a tech guy. For me, the value of all this and anybody in the room that's dealing with this as a problem is the solving of the problem is how do I get the information that I want, regardless of what that information is. Now, in your case, it's, you know, somebody said something negative in a tweet, you want to go to the actual tweet that generated that. That's the proof in the pudding. That's the real value of being able to do this. So regardless, as long as whatever the source that comes in is what you can ultimately pull to whether it's stale statistics, whether it's something related to what you're talking about. So, but that's good. Any other questions? It looks like we have a quiet group today. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your time. One thing that I would want to mention, again, if you have any questions, you're welcome to get to us. My hope that you leave today's session, and the number one thing you said is, should we contact Scientel? Do we have a product or a service? Was there something you heard or seen today? that might solve a problem that you have. We're happy to do that. In fact, we'll be having cigars and stuff up on the porch around 7 o'clock tonight. So anybody who's a cigar fan is more than welcome to join me. And we'll discuss no SQL technology to the nth degree.
Do you want to close, Greg? Mm-hmm. Your problem. Mm-hmm.